Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode we'll be discussing about events. Okay, now I want you to imagine, you're playing Minecraft, and you're exploring a jungle temple filled with all these tripwires that are, that are inside of the temple. You decide to step on it, and it triggers a dispenser that shoots you with multitudes of arrows that you didn't see coming at all. Now I know that's kind of a weird example, but what I wanted you to get from that is that things happen when something triggers it. So, in other words, when the game waits for an event to trigger, which in this case would have been stepping on the tripwire, then a certain action would happen, which would be uh, shooting the player with the arrows. So that's kind of how it works here in Roblox Studio as well. When you're creating a Roblox game, there's certain things that happen because of something else that caused it to happen. And the way we can describe this is by events. Things happen due to other things that happen. Events are a pretty broad topic to talk about, so in this episode I'll be discussing about two built-in events provided by Roblox Studio and are the most common ones that Roblox developers use in their games. Okay, so let's go to the right side and let's disable our loop script and then we'll create another script inside of the workspace. We'll call this one events. And let's uh, delete our loop script and delete this code right here. Okay, so whenever a player joins a Roblox game, a lot of times, we want to keep track of what's happening uh, when a player joins a game. And the way we do that is by creating an event that waits for the trigger to happen to execute a specific line of code, like a specific line or multiple lines of code. In this case, the trigger is when a player joins the game. That's when we want this uh, script to do stuff. So the way we're going to write this event is in two ways. There's two ways of writing events, and I'm gonna show you one way. So one way is going to be a it is gonna be writing it like this. So we're gonna type in game, and then we're gonna type in dot players. Now this is something we haven't talked about yet up until this point. So if we look on the right side, players is a component of game, but we've mostly been working with workspace that's been a component of game, but this time we're gonna be using players. So we're gonna say game dot players dot player added and as you can see this is a um this is an event that triggers when a player has joined or entered into the game that we're creating so we're going to say game dot players dot player added and what's in and what we're going to do next is we're going to type in a colon connect or because we want to be able to activate this event whenever uh, whenever this event has been triggered. So we're gonna say colon connect, and it doesn't matter if connect is in uppercase or lowercase, but usually I, I do it uppercase. So we say connect, and then we say open parenthesis, and inside of this open parenthesis, we're gonna say function. And we're actually going to delete uh, this uh, end bracket here, because what we're gonna say here is we're going to create the function, and then we're going to have open and close parentheses here. And inside of these parentheses with this function, and the first argument that this function provides for us is the actual player object that joins into the game. So this, in this case, we're gonna say player. And then on the right side, we're going to hit enter and Roblox is automatically going to put in another uh, end statement here, but this time they're also going to add in a end parenthesis here. So this is the structure of of the player added function, uh, the player added event specifically. But usually, whenever you're creating an event, uh, the things that are that are common when creating an event is the colon connect and then the open parenthesis function. But the arguments vary depending on what the event actually is. Like in this case, this is player added, so we're only going to have one argument, which is going to be player. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let's say make a print statement here that says a new player has joined the game. And then we're gonna make another print statement here that uh, that prints the player object itself. And that's basically what we're going to be printing whenever, whenever a new player has joined the game. So let's go back into the game and then hit play. And as soon as we join the game, uh, my character should be joining into the game and then we should be printing it right here. A new player has joined the game, Brawl Battle, which is my username up here. So. This event only triggers whenever a new player has joined the game. And that is how we're supposed to do this uh, for every event that we create or every built-in uh, event that we create. 
So that's, so that's the player added one, but now let's write the player added one in a different way. So instead of writing the signature like this, we'll write it like this instead. So we'll say local function on player added. And then what we're gonna do for our first argument is we're going to say player. Uh, and this should look more familiar to you because this is how we've been creating functions in the past. So then we're gonna say here the same thing, which was print a new pl uh, player has joined the game. And then down here, we're going to print player. So it's the same thing as last time, but this time we're writing the function differently down here. But now we're gonna drop two lines outside of the function by saying game.players.player added. And then we're still going to add in the colon connect. But this time what we're gonna do is, if you remember last time, we created a new function here that had the player uh, as a as a argument, but this time all we need to do here is we just need to throw in the on player added function w without the the parentheses added in. This is all we need to do. We don't need to have a new function here with the function and then the the argument with like the with like the end statement with it. All we need is just throw in our on player added function into this connect call right here. So when when a player when the player added event is called we're going to connect that event to this function right here which is going to be the on player added where something new happens so that's the second way of creating a built-in event and you can you can write it either way because they're both going to do the exact same thing it just depends on preference and also sometimes contextually it is going to matter how you write the the event but as of right now these are two different ways you can write an event so that was player added but the second most common built-in event that we're going to talk about is touched essentially what touched is is that any object that's inside of the game uh for instance like uh, one of our parts here or the base plate or our spawn location there's an event that lies within each of these parts called a touched event. And it's triggered when a player or any object in this in, in this case touches uh, the part. When a part touches a specific part inside of the workspace, then it's going to trigger that touched event that some part has touched it. Whether that's a player, whether that's another part, whether that's just, yeah. <laughs> whether that's just anything that's inside of the workspace that connects with uh, the part that we're trying to focus on when we're touching it. So let's uh, so let's just create a new part here uh, inside of the workspace. So let's go to model and then hit part. And we're going to go to the right side and rename this part. Uh, let's say touched part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to s move this up here a little bit by pressing the move uh, the move uh, option. And we're going to hit and we're going to go down here into properties and then check the anchored uh the anchored property and anchored basically means that it's that the part is going to uh stay in place while it's floating in the air it's not just going to drop down due to gravity that's basically what uh anchored means so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our events uh script here and first we're going to get a reference to our touched part so we're going to say local touched part equals game dot workspace dot touched part so now we have a reference to the touched part but now what we're going to do is we're going to say touched part dot touched this is the event that we're going to call right here and by the way uh events built-in events are uh represented by this uh little lightning bolt symbol right here that's how you know it's an it's a built-in event so we're going to say touched connect because we want to we want to connect the event that we're trying to fire here and we're going to create a new function, a uh, function like this, and we're gonna delete this end statement, and then we're gonna delete this uh, end parenthesis right here with two more right here, and uh, and for right now it doesn't, and for right now we're not going to use any arguments here, we're just going to hit enter like this, and what we're gonna do is, we're going to make a print statement here saying, uh, our touch part has been touched. Okay, so now let's go into the game and let's hit play. So our so what we're gonna do is our character is going to touch the part and then it should be printing the print statement that we made it print. So let's touch it. And as you can see down here, our touched part has been touched seven times. And the reason that uh, our print statement is printing so many times all at once is because our Roblox character is made up of multiple parts, and so multiple of our parts are touching this part at the exact same time, because 
our character doesn't make up one touch. It's actually touching our arm, it's touching our hand, it's touching our accessory. That's why it's touching it all at the same time. Uh, like like 50 times instead of just one. There are ways to go, to work around that, but I won't be discussing it, that in this video. I was just introducing you to events and how they work. So that's pretty much the basics of events. Um, for the learning objective, you can make the game do other things. Uh, you can make the script do other things if a game if a player decides to join the game, or you can uh, have something happen with the part uh, if if a player touches it, or if you want some other part to touch the part, or hey, whatever you want to do with it. It's up to you. So that's gonna be it for events. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.